AEW Dynamite took place in Charleston, West Virginia. And what you did was you had um, a backstage segment, which I hated. This is like very much WWE-ish. Um, you start off at the backstage in which Tony Khan's in his office. You never see Tony Khan, but you see John Moxley go into his office. Yelling him, swear about Kenny Omega, saying he's your golden boy, and officially announced what happens is that they are going to have a match at full gear, but it's going to be like this unsanctioned match. It's going to be because of Moxley's injury or whatever. They're not going to sanction it. It's going to be, uh, I think it's like how they did the match at uh, the Fighter Fest show with Moxley against Joey Janela, in which they turned the lights off and they turned them back in, so it's an unsanctioned match. I don't know if that's going to be the main event. Probably not. It's going to be Jericho Cody. But, hey, they'll have a hell of a match. It's cool. They're going to do a hardcore match. It's the kind of match they want to have. And uh, it was fine to hype up the match. Then they go back. We have JR, uh, Tony Schiavone, and um, Excalibur to hype up some of the matches. Uh, they uh, start off with Hangman Page against Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara can be a star. They like him a lot. Um, he is with uh, the Inner Circle, obviously. He's against Adam Hangman Page. And Hangman, you know, since losing his big match to Chris Jericho at uh, All Out, he's been on the downward trajectory. He hasn't really had a big signature win in quite some time. You really want to see him have a bigger match and have a, a win a big match, but it doesn't really happen. He uh, gets a win here. He beats Sammy Guevara. They had a good opener. They had to go head-to-head with a much better NXT opener, uh, which I watched them both back-to-back this time, so my NXT review will be up soon. I usually watch AEW on Wednesday and uh, NXT on Thursday, but I watched them both tonight. So uh, Hangman, Page 1, Beth, and NXT had a better match at this time. Uh, they uh, have Adam Page. He says that while things have been going great for him lately, he feels good, and he will do some cowboy shit at the pay-per-view against Pac. So... That'll be a fun matchup, Hangman and uh, Pac at uh, Full Gear. They uh, show a commercial about Full Gear, and they do highlights in the match. That's what they do now with AEW on uh, TNT is they'll show you uh, what happened uh, during the commercial with a split screen. Up next is Shauna. She is a female Portuguese wrestler. She looks great. She's a hot blonde, and uh, her opponent is Haikuru Shida. And wow, what a matchup they had. It was crazy. So NXT, you have Candice Ray and um, Io Shirai having a great match. Then right away, when you turn on AEW, there's a men's match. And they go to another great women's match. And the woman outshining the men. This time, this AEW had a better match. While NXT had their match. Uh, you have Shauna against Hukaru Shida. I like Shauna a lot. I think she can be a star. Uh, she's very attractive, obviously, but I like her. Uh, Sheeta was great here. Sheeta's one of the best female wrestlers. I still think Sheeta would have a better chance, uh, choice to get the first uh, AEW Women's title besides uh, over Rio. And I like Rio. I think she's a star. I think she can be uh, has a lot of potential. But the problem with Rio is she's so small that she's an underdog. And that's good, obviously. You want underdogs. But she's an underdog champion. Like She's the kind of person you want to build up to have a big title reign, a big signature win. You want to have that big journey with her. And you don't really get to have that. So I thought she'd have a better chance. But I loved watching this. This was a hell of a match. 15 minutes into the 15-minute time limit. Uh, I mean, so I think it's 20-minute time limit. It was a battle. I loved watching it. Uh, I was super into it. Uh, a lot of close falls. Look like they might give it to Shauna, but Sheeta eventually gets the win. She hits a falcon arrow, and then uh, Sheeta, Shauna kicks it, and then she hits a running knee, though, um, uh, and puts Shauna away. So guys showing for Shauna, uh, and uh, I doubt that uh, she's, uh, you know, that they're, they really got something for her. Uh, they show JR uh, talking about what was happened with Brandy Rhodes. She attacks that random chick uh, last week. And then she talks, uh, she does a video uh, putting on goth and having an evil smile. Ugh, this is just awful. I don't care about this. They have Chris Van Vliet. He hypes up the tag team title main event. And they bring out the Rock and Roll Express. They get a big pop. pop. This is cool. I was, love seeing them. And all of a sudden, Santana and Atreides kill the Rock and Roll Express. They destroy these guys. Uh, they beat down Morty. I think Morty was, uh, I guess he couldn't do his physical stuff as uh, Ricky did. But Morty gets thrown down to the stage. Um, uh, and what happened is... No, I, I'm sorry, not Morty, uh, Robert, Robert Gibson. I messed that up. Uh, Morton, Rickard, Rickard Morton. Uh, he's the one who, got, who took the big bomb. So 
Uh, Gibson's down. He's on the stage, and then Martin takes a big power bomb through uh, the stage by Santana and Guerrero. They also used the sock as a weapon that had like uh, weapons in it, which was cool. But they kill poor Ricky Martin. Power bomb through a section of the stage. Holy shit! Moment. They kill this old man. Did the young bucks come out? They chase the inner circle away, and uh, Jr. really does well here. He really puts it over old school Jr. This was a great segment. Uh, we see a recap of what we just saw. Then they show uh, Choni Shivani with uh, Cody, Cody Rhodes. And uh, Choni talks about uh, Dust Eater telling stories that went on way too long. And the fans got really angry and they started chanting, boring. I want to change on NXT at this point. But, uh, yeah, this went on way, way too long. Too long. It was, it was okay at first, but, man, it was too long. Uh, then... Um, you know, they uh, they keep talking, Coach Tony, you know, he talks about uh, Dusty and the story with the motel room. And, um, you know, he uh, basically ends up with the star has to come out second or whatever. It was, it was not good. So next match is right in the ring. You have uh, John Oliver, Alex Reynolds, and QT Marshall. And then um, they introduce... Uh, They had a uh, Ricky and Morty uh, in the front row. Uh, they introduced Orange Cassidy and Rick and the Best Friends, um, and um, you have Trent Barretta and Chuck Taylor uh, with Orange Cassidy in the six man tag. So, Best Friends and Orange Cassidy get the win. It was a squash match. Really didn't care for it. Uh, I don't care about anyone who cares who's a Ricky and Morty fan. That's what I was thinking when I thought the Rock and Roll Express. Why did I think that Ricky and Morty oh, I must messed up? Damn it, Ricky and Morty. Uh, so they show uh, Jericho come out. Uh, they're going to do the big, uh, you know, contract signing. He has a Halloween-themed jacket with pumpkins. It was kind of funny. Cody comes out with his limo uh, outside. Uh, he uh, comes out. He makes Jericho wait like he's a star. Here's the segment. This is like a WWE show. There's so much talking. It went on for a while. They had that st- terrible contract signing. It, this this one was okay. It's like they have it on the stage this time. It, I don't know. I'm just not that into the, the, these kinds of promos. Um, Jericho talks about how it's the biggest match of the year. It's a big match of Cody's crew, which is true. He uh, he calls the crowd millennial jackasses, which is true as well. He uh, J- Jericho uh, Cody moves his shirt. Jericho calls the fans hillbillies. Yes, I'm in West Virginia. I see you have to call them hillbillies for heat. Um, he rips off, he rips into the fans, and then they shake hands, and uh, they're having a conversation. All of a sudden, Cody pushes Jericho back into him, and they have a long stare that goes on for a while. Then Jericho brings Cody's attention to the Titan Tron, and there they show uh, that uh, the inner circle is killing Dustin Rhodes. Uh, they show Jake Hager beating down Dusty Rhodes, and Sammy Guevara is there as well. It ends with uh, Hager putting, uh, he slams Dustin's Rhodes, heads into the car, and he puts his arm and he, uh, into the car, and he slams it with the door, which was brutal, look vicious, and then uh, it, it was a bad beating, and then he had Cody and MGF come down um, and uh, make the save, and then he had uh, Jericho go there, there, as after the damage, he had, like, uh, leaves, the lim- leaves in his limbo after lighting a cigar, which was funny. They show uh, recaps of what had happened. They really put it over. It was, it was a good segment. So next you have Hybrid and Two, two and uh, Kip Sabian uh, in a six-man tag against uh, against Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Kenny Omega comes out as the cleaner, and uh, it's basically a video game-style entrance. And then you have the Young Bucks dressed up as uh, Ryu and Ken for Halloween. They're the Street Fighters, which was really cool. I love the Street Fighters. Uh, I'm a huge fan of that game. I love Street Fighter 2 is one of the best video games ever. Might be the best video game ever. How could you not love Street Fighter 2? I love Street Fighter 2. So anyway, the Ryu and Ken, and uh, they team with Kenny. They had a good match up here. It was a fun match. Ricardo's into it. The problem is like they do the same thing every week. So I think eventually, I mean, in the Indies it doesn't matter because it's a new crowd. But I think on TV people might get to get bored of the Young Bucks a bit. But uh, it was a good match up here. I enjoyed it. Young Bucks and Kenny Omega get the win. Omega gets the V trigger and a one winged angel, and uh, he uh, gets the win. And uh, you have them take take over. But after the match, you have Santana Ortiz. They have these masks on. And they're shaking the Young Bucks' hands, and they jump the Young Bucks. They take them in, uh, through the crowd. They beat them down for all. Eventually, Kenny makes the save, uh, and the, uh, they run off. 
but uh, they're really coming off as assholes here. JR is really ripping into him. He's calling him trash, uh, which is true to get them over as a top heel. He's really uh, pissed off at them. And uh, I thought it was a good segment again. You know, I thought it did well here. Uh, they really wanted to make you hate Santana and Ortiz. They're a good heel team. And uh, they leave the Young Bucks laying. Uh, then uh, you show uh, the librarians come out. They're hushing the crowd. Um, then finally, you had uh, Peter. What's uh, Kathy Bates? Is that her name? Or Leva Bates. Not Kathy Bates. Leva Bates. She's hot. Uh, they're, they're talking. Uh, Moxley comes, kills Peter. And he goes on uh, for a while about his match. He's pissed off. He takes subtle, subtle shots at WWE. Talks about how they told him what to do. Their puppet master, stuff like that. He is unconscionable and out of control. And you, you ain't seen nothing. He tells the detractors to kiss his ass instead of his way. It was a great promo. So if you like it a little bit more than I did, I thought it was, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it great, actually. I thought it was a good promo. I liked it. I liked to see him go off a bit more, but I thought it was well to hype up the match. Maybe he'll do a better one uh, in the Go Home uh, show. Uh, they show the tag team titles, and we have our first ever AEW tag team titles. You have the Lucha Brothers, who come out first, and you have SCU next. Uh, Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sai against Pentagon and Phoenix. Main event. So, this was a big surprise. Wow. Uh, they had a good matchup here. I enjoyed it, but it was a huge surprise. Even with SCU as the champs, I don't know why. I don't know why they wouldn't go with the Lucha Bros here. Uh, but then with SCU was a huge surprise, and the fans were a little bit pissed off at first. Uh, there was some bad reactions, like, really, what the fuck? They had Scorpio Sky. Uh, I think he uh, got Pentagon for the three count, which was a big surprise. And the fans, you know, they liked SCU. They're like, what? The Lucha Bros are, like, the best act in the world. Why are they not the first ever AEW champs? It made no sense, and it got some heat, which was interesting. But um, I thought the show was good overall. I enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, one more week until full gear.